So I'm going to do a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy on Zach now. And I've done about two and a half thousand of these over the years. And in my hands and in my opinion, this dog is going to most likely have a reliable result first time and be walking well on the leg within two weeks and have the lameness resolved in six weeks without complication. Any operation can have a complication rate. TPLO, uh, certainly in large breed dogs, infection is a potential risk. But in my experience and, and in my opinion, this kind of procedure for this large breed dog in which the other knee may go as well, is reliable, robust and effective. And at the end of the day, my job is to provide pain-free functional quality of life and that's what we're about to do once. We're going to do this up once and we want a result once. The osteoarthritis that exists will remain. You're never going to cure that, you're never going to cure the arthritis, but the vast majority of dogs don't need a total knee replacement. They, they need an effective procedure once and most of them cope very well with osteoarthritis on an ongoing basis. So we're going to cut the tibia, we're going to plate it in its new position and it may sound like it's horrendous but this dog will be happy within a week is my plan. The thing about cruciate surgery in dogs is that uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. People have a lot of opinions about what's good, what's not good, which op is better than which op, etc, etc. The reality is that just like hip disease and elbow disease, the three most common diseases that affect these large breed dogs from an orthopedic perspective, elbow, hip and knee, it's not one size fits all, it really isn't. It's not, okay this op is better than this op because it works better every time. It's not as simple as that. Every cruciate disease that happens is unique to that particular dog and whilst you may get good at a particular procedure, and you may be comfortable with that procedure and it may work well for you, that's fine, that's fine, I get that. But for every single dog, you have to take that owner's and that dog's circumstances into account. So you have to take into account that that particular dog is gonna put X amount of load through that leg, which is gonna be different for a Collie and a Bernese Mountain Dog. So in this case, as a Bernese Mountain Dog, who's gonna put a huge amount of load through that leg, big heavy dog, with severe arthritis already and therefore you need to use a technique that's going to remain robust and that is not going to fail and is going to stand the test of time and to my mind uh, with a dog like this, a very large dog, depending on a bit of nylon or a bit of uh, material of any kind to hold that together is not in my opinion the best treatment. That's my opinion I can argue it on a scientific basis, I can argue it on an experiential basis, I can argue it on evidence-based medicine insofar as we have it, but at the end of the day it's down to clinical judgment and it's down to the judgment of the individual veterinarian for that individual dog. And the owner of the dog, the guardian of the dog needs to be aware that different techniques may suit different dogs better. So coming in and requesting a TTA or a TPLO or a tightrope or a lateral suture or whatever people want to call things is I think foolhardy and being biased in terms of one technique is also foolhardy. So people perceive this as more invasive than uh, doing a ligament replacement so they perceive that making the cut in the bone is more invasive than replacing the ligament. That's not true because as you know if you sprain your ankle it will take longer to recover and it may never recover by comparison with breaking your tibia. So a bone will heal much quicker than a ligament. As you'll see I haven't cut the leg completely open. I've slid the plate down underneath the skin and open up less reducing the chance of infection and having a less invasive approach.